quite an operation here. Well, look at it. Well, this is the largest family of them all. This is the family of Oregon. They, uh, the stockholders own this vineyard, don't they? That's right. There's 3,500 members, and they're like one big happy family. They're all wine lovers, and they've, uh, they've created something here that's totally unique to the state of Oregon. Well, they have 75 acres of prime, prime grapes growing here. That looks like a pagoda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're here early because pretty soon it'll be so crowded it'll be hard to turn around in here. Well, let's go meet everyone. Okay. First, I'll meet with Mary, the events coordinator, and I'll ask her about that pagoda. This is our new hospitality center. It's going to house a larger tasting room, a viewing tower, which will view the entire valley. It's just a gorgeous view from the top. What is it, six stories? I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it's just incredible. And it's going to have a round observation Great. place at the top and uh, larger meeting rooms and banquet hall it's just it's going to be a great utility we run about one festival a month on average we have food dancing wine tasting fun people coming out for the weekend it's a lot of fun dusty is the marketing director and he really knows his wines this is our 1992 ovb chardonnay oh this is your very best our very best exactly <laughs> it's a designation that we just came out with this year and all the barrels are hand-selected by the winemaker, Bean Cox. Well, the next one I'd like you to try is our Pinot Gris. This is the 1993 vintage of our Pinot Gris. This wine is rapidly becoming a, a, a very uh, well-recognized wine for the state of Oregon. Oregon's one of the leading producers in the world of Pinot Gris. We were actually featured on CNN worldwide for this wine. Really? Uh, one of the wine brokers and critics uh, got a hold of some of our bottles of Pinot and Pinot Gris. And they held it up in front of the camera and said, this wine's going to become very famous. <laughs> For a young winery, we're really only about four years old. Our first vintage we sold uh, in the middle of the summer of 1990. So we're very, very young. And to receive the acclaim that we have over the years, it's uh, very special. And it's due to a lot of hard work. In 1989, they had a competition between the Burgundian wines and Oregon Pinot Noirs, which are uh, both made with Pinot Noir. And Oregon took the top five of seven positions. And most of these burgundy wines, when you go to the, the wine shop, will cost $30 and $40 a bottle. And they put it blind with our wines, which cost $12 and $10 and $15. And Oregon came out ahead. So great. again, you can find a great value in a, in a beautiful wine. Dean Cox has been learning about winemaking since he was a little kid. You must love what you do. Oh, I really do. It's a passion. You can't, in winemaking and wine, fine wines, people get passionate about these kinds of things. And well, once it's in your blood, it's, it won't go away. You uh, told me that your grandmother made wine. That's correct. What kind of wine did she make? Oh, no, Grandma used to make dandelion wine, <laughs> huckleberry wine, elderberry wine, uh, whatever she could. And uh, But uh, kids had to run out and pick, it up, pick all this stuff for her, of course. Of course. And, yeah, so that was your very early beginnings. <laughs> five years old picking blackberries and dandelions and who knows what else just to make this wine. Roots. Yeah, because <laughs> your roots. Did she let you try it? Uh, a thimbleful. Yeah. You know, yeah. thimbleful. I just had to ask Dean his opinion of Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is uh, uh, one of the most delicate yet full and rich flavored wines uh, that I know of. It's uh, interesting because of its delicacy and also because it offers you so many complex aromas and characters and this wonderful sweet fruit sensation. Showtime. I could hear the Sawtooth Mountain Boys playing the Orange Blossom Special. Mary said they have different events like this almost every month. You know, it seemed as though we were viewing the entire Willamette Valley. There it was, the end of the Oregon Trail. Toe tapping, foot stomping, fiddle playing fun. I think everybody and their dog was there. Good music. 